Welcome back. My name is Jim Casement. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. We started talking about faith a couple sessions back, and we, we started off with Hebrews 11:6. Without faith, it but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For you must believe that He is, that He actually exists. So then we went to Proverbs 3, verse 5. And it said that we're to trust the Lord with all our heart and not lean to our own understanding. So there really you could say another word for faith is trust. You trust God. You have faith in him. And so without that, you can't please God. You can't have an intimate relationship with anybody, much less with God, if you don't trust him, if you don't have faith in him. And so then it's important. Faith is important very important if you're going to have an intimate relationship with God. And so then we, uh, we, we closed then by or came to the end of the last session by talking about new blood covenant. And of course, uh, you'll hear a lot about, more about it. We talked about it quite some time ago, but we are actually as Christians today, we are in the new blood covenant with God almighty, the creator of this universe through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, in blood covenant, as we saw when we talked about the Hebrew men cutting covenant quite a while back now, after they walked through the bloody halves of the animals and all that sort of stuff, they would come to a place where they'd stand before witnesses. Now, each covenant partner has to do their part. And so in this particular part of the new blood covenant, they would stand before witnesses and each man which would, would share with the other their assets, liabilities, their families, their number of sheep, cattle, or what have you. And they would say, now this all belongs to you. I have no right to any of it. And then they'd do it vice versa. Well, in the new blood covenant that we have with God Almighty, it's a, we, we then have, each of us have a part to play. I have a part to play, and God has a part to play through Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus did his part. He paid the death penalty for our sins. Our sins have been pardoned. Our sins have been remitted. The debt to guilt is paid. Now, in exchange... My part as covenant partner with Jesus is to be obedient. My part is to be obedient. So saving faith is when you get saved and you enter into blood covenant with Jesus or God. And now from that, the moment that you got saved, now your part is to be obedient. All right, you got saved. But living an obedient life every day, that's what's called saving faith. By faith. You obey God every day once you ask him to come to your heart to be Lord and Master. Now, the problem is a lot of people think, well, I asked Jesus into my heart by faith 20 years ago, and that's all I had to do. And of course, now you've not been living for God. You don't go to church. You don't read the Bible. And you say, well, I'm going to go to heaven. No, you're not going to heaven. Because you have not been, been living, living in faith having that living faith and or walking with God every day and obeying him. So in order to get to, you have to not only get saved, you got to stay saved. And how you stay saved is by being obedient to him every day. And what is obedient? What do you do? Well, you read the word. And some of the things the Lord tells us to do as obedient children is walk in love with one another. Walk by faith with God. Believe God's word. Obey God's word. And so there's a lot of words in the scriptures that are important. Death, life. Satan, God. Children of the devil, children of God. Life, death, healing, health. And then there's obedience and disobedience. Obedience leads to holiness and righteousness, and heaven. Disobedience leads to unholiness, unrighteousness, doing what's wrong, living for the devil, and that leads to hell. Walking by faith and obeying God leads to heaven. Walking and not, and not walking in the word, not obeying God, leads to hell. It's that simple. So, but then here's the other thing. Under the old covenant, 
They could never keep the law or the Ten Commandments or anything like that. They always failed. They couldn't do it in their own strength. But now in the new blood covenant, it's entirely different. Jesus, as our high priest and working with the Holy Spirit, that all-powerful Holy Spirit, he helps us to obey him. <laughs> he helps us to stay saved if we'll let him. If we'll let him. So if you refuse to yield to that temptation. I, you're tempted to do something or think about something that's not right and you and you written your heart, no, I'm not going to do that. The moment you, as an act of your free will, it, it, decide you're not going to yield to that temptation, the power of God's there to help you not to yield to that temptation. You're tempted to disobey God and you say, no, that's wrong. I, I, I must obey God. Right there, the power of God comes and he helps you to obey him. That's the new blood covenant. But I don't know why it is most Christians try to do it on their own under the new blood covenant. They try to do it on their own, try to get healed, try to get saved, try to get walk in love, try to walk by faith, and, and they don't ask God to allow God to help them. Whew, the new blood covenant is awesome. See, our will is involved. We can choose to obey or we can choose to disobey. But if you choose to obey, God's power is right there to help you in that obedience. Well, I don't know about you, but that sure, that's sure exciting stuff. <laughs> All right, well, so faith is saving. Now is present tense. Saving faith is present tense. It's every day of our life walking on this earth with God. We are walking by faith every day, every day, not just when we ask him to come into our heart. All right. We better move on a little bit here and go a little bit further. Next thing we see here in Hebrews 11, 1 again, that's a packed verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance of things hoped for. Well, and, and, and so when we uh, t uh, hoped for, and hope is a strong desire, and it's a confident expectation. Now, if I go to uh, the... Um, um, amplify, I mean, to the Hebrews 10 and 23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Our hope, that confident expectation. And it ends, the verse ends saying, for he who promised is faithful. So by faith, I'm believing I've received some certain thing, whatever it is when you pray. You don't see it instantly right away. That's usually the way it is. It takes a little time. But your hope is in the one who promised. God promised to heal you. God promised to meet your need. God promised to what have you. Your hope is in God keeping his word. But see, faith gives substance to what you're hoping for. Faith gives substance to what you're hoping for. Initially, when you start walking by faith, you say, by faith I believe, but really in your heart, oh, you don't really believe. But as you continue to hold fast to the word of God, and we're going to talk about that in some detail here in the future here, uh, as you continue to hold fast to the word and confess the word and say, I believe your word, it is the word gives substance to what you're hoping for. And then that day comes when it manifests. He who promised is faithful. Glory be to God. All right, I hope I didn't get too far ahead of ourselves here. So faith is the one that gives substance to all the things hoped for. And again, the world's definition of hope, that's not what we're talking about. Well, I sure hope it comes to pass. No. When you're talking about biblical hope, your hope is grounded in the word, which never changes. God never changes. And God cannot lie. And what he promised is faithful. So when you have biblical hope, and this is what Hebrews 10.23 is, and you hold fast to your hope in God's word and what he promised, he will promise, as long as you don't waver, hold fast to the confession of your hope without wavering. All right. Now, another interesting thing is, as I come over here into the Amplified Bible, still talking Hebrews 11, 1, and here's how it reads in the Amplified Bible, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 
one, chapter 11, verse 1, and we're out of time. So we'll read that verse in the next session. <laughs> Meanwhile, be blessed in all that you set your hands to do until we meet again.